dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. Hello everybody and welcome to my guest blog talking about commonalities between different diseases of the brain. My name is Chris Henstridge and it's my pleasure to have been asked by Jenny Gabriel at MND Scotland and Adam Smith at Dementia Researcher to write this piece which I've entitled Fading Stars, Disorder in the Galaxy of the Brain. Now there are more connection points or synapses between our brain cells than there are stars in our galaxy. These tiny structures are essential for brain function and hold the key to our every thought, feeling, movement and memory. Given their fundamental role in brain function, it's maybe unsurprising that their dysfunction is linked to many diseases of the brain. But where, when and why do these connections break down and can we find ways of stopping it happen? This is essentially the focus of my research at the University of Dundee, and in this blog post I will summarise how synapse loss is a conserved feature across two seemingly very different diseases, frontotemporal dementia, or FTD, and motor neuron disease, MND. Frontotemporal dementia hit the headlines recently when Bruce Willis announced his retirement from acting following a diagnosis of FTD. This is a rarer form of dementia than Alzheimer's disease. It's commonly diagnosed between 45 to 65 years of age and is caused by a disruption in the frontal and temporal lobes. People living with FTD often display changes in their personality, mood and language, with memory problems occurring much later in disease progression. So how could this possibly have any link to motor neuron disease, which only causes movement problems, right? Now, as you may know, MND is gaining a lot of exposure thanks to some high-profile sportsmen living with the disease and the superhero endurance feats by their close family and friends to raise money for MND care and research. For example, Rob Burrow, his wife Lindsay, and their close friend Kevin Sinfield recently ran the London Marathon to raise awareness and funds for MND and they often appear together on TV to talk about their lived experience. Now, MND is an umbrella term for several different diseases caused by the breakdown of motor neurons in the brain and or the spinal cord. This leads to progressive weakening of the muscles and paralysis, with many people unfortunately passing away within two to three years after diagnosis. However, around half of all MND patients also have problems with their thinking skills, and show changes that are very similar to people with frontotemporal dementia, mostly language, personality, and mood changes. Now, this is very important because these changes are often overlooked, yet they can have a profound impact on the quality of life of the patient and their support network. And sadly, these patients also tend to have a more aggressive form of the disease. So one question is, could similar underlying changes in the brain explain the similar symptoms that we see in people with frontal temporal dementia and motor neuron disease. Now, we know that synapse loss is the strongest correlate with cognitive decline in Alzheimer's disease and that synapse loss occurs in the brains of people with frontal temporal dementia. This was shown in several seminal studies during the 1990s that linked synapse density in post-mortem human brains with previous cognitive testing scores. In around the same time, or maybe the, the following decade, uh, a number of functional and structural brain scanning studies of MND patients with and without cognitive decline revealed changes in parts of the frontal cortex that looked like changes observed in people with frontal temporal dementia. However, for a very long time, we had no idea what the underlying changes were that associated with this cognitive change in people with FTD and MND. Then, as a postdoc in the lab of Professor Tara Spires Jones's lab at the University of Edinburgh, I started to look at this with the hypothesis that maybe synapse loss could be a major feature. Synapse loss had never been linked to cognitive change in MND before, and I was fortunate enough that MND Scotland found my hypothesis compelling enough to award me a three year project grant in 2016. In this study, using two high resolution imaging techniques, I discovered that MND patients tended to have a lower synapse density in the frontal cortex than people without MND. But importantly, MND patients with cognitive decline tended to have the lowest synapse densities, suggesting a link for the first time between cognitive change in MND and synapse loss. Interestingly, and, and importantly, uh, this appears to have been confirmed in recent work using live human participants and synapse targeting tracers which can be visualised in a PET scan. The researchers have found that synapse loss in the frontal cortex of FTD patients tracks very closely with the progression of cognitive decline. So there's a number of studies now showing that synapse loss occurs in the brain 
and appears to be linked to clinical presentation of disease. But what is driving that synapse loss? Well, it's becoming increasingly accepted across the neurodegeneration field that synapse loss is a central player in disease. However, the mechanisms driving synapse loss are largely unknown. So following my previous work, showing that synapse loss occurs in the frontal cortex of MND patients with cognitive decline, we decided to perform experiments to try and discover why these synapses were being lost. To do this, we extracted synaptically enriched fractions from post-mortem brain and isolated the proteins for identification by mass spectrometry. We had three experimental groups. Firstly, donations from non-neurological controls, donations from people who had lived with MND, and donations from people who had lived with MND with cognitive impairment. We identified almost 6,000 proteins at the synapse, and we found that several hundred of these had changed in expression levels in the MND samples. Now importantly, based on our experimental approach, we could tease out a molecular signature that was present in the MND with cognitive impairment samples. And this revealed some key inflammatory pathways that were upregulated and several postsynaptic scaffolding proteins that were downregulated. One of the inflammatory pathways we identified had already been linked to a shorter survival time in motor neuron disease patients. And we are now working on whether these changes that we see at the synapse are a cause or a consequence of disease, and whether some of these changes are specific for motor neuron disease or merely a conserved feature of end-stage neurodegenerative disease. So what about disease-associated proteins at the synapse? Well, we know that in the vast majority of brain diseases, especially neurodegenerative ones, that disease-associated proteins accumulate in the brain. Now, in both of the studies, in both of my studies that I described above, I also showed that a protein linked with Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal dementia, and motor neuron disease called TB43 was found to be present at the human synapse. TB43 is normally found in the nucleus, but at any one time it's believed around 30% of the protein may exist outside the nucleus in other locations, potentially the synapse. So could this function in this protein be a link between several different diseases of the brain? Now, to try and get at this question, MND Scotland and Alzheimer's Research UK recently co-funded a collaborative project between myself and Dr. Francisco Inesta Vaquera, also in Dundee, to establish new model systems for assessing TDB43-induced cell stress. Now, while this project will not be able to address specifically the synaptic role for TDB43 pathology, it will help us to generate novel temporal and spatial information on the development of TDP43 induced damage in the brain. And this will be important for many different brain diseases given the convergent accumulation of TDP43 pathology observed at post-mortem. Now further work in our lab is beginning to focus on the synaptic role of TDP43 and whether this may be a more direct link between pathology, synapse loss and the overlapping cognitive changes that are seen in Alzheimer's, FTD and motor neuron disease. Now, I believe it's very important for different funders to come together and look at some of these commonalities between different diseases. Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal dementia, and motor neuron disease are clearly different diseases. They mostly affect different brain areas. Different cell types are particularly vulnerable. Clinical presentation is predominantly distinct. But I believe there's a lot to learn in the areas of overlap. And furthermore, arguably most importantly, by working in these areas of overlap, any discovery or breakthrough in understanding will have far-reaching impact across several devastating brain diseases. Now, as a field, as we advance our understanding of brain changes in disease, I hope that one day we'll be able to ensure that everyone's galaxy shines bright into old age. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.